Hello, dear friends. What a blessing to be here today. Here we are with another program. Shade Martin from the Spirit Society of Richmond in Richmond, Virginia, in collaboration with Kardec Radio. We bring to you the Spiritist Magazine. As always, we want to remind everyone to visit uh, the website, spiritismagazine.org. Here you will find all of the resources for the Spiritist Magazine Facebook page, the app for the, um, the App Store. We also have a donate button if you're able to support the activities of providing the Spiritist Magazine to you free of charge. You can go to PDF downloads and download any and all issues of the magazine that you wish to read, that you wish to talk about with your family members and friends. And the Spiritist Magazine also has an app, which means you can have the Spiritist Magazine on your phone, on your tablet, everywhere you go. Therefore, you can um, contact us as well on the website. If you have the app, you can take it anywhere and use every single opportunity for nourishing your soul with this Spiritist magazine. And today we'll be talking about ethical autonomy by autonomy by the author. The author is Claudio. Claudio Sinotti, who is a psychologist in Brazil, whose work is sometimes featured in the Spiritist magazine. It's always a blessing to be able to do that with you. If you are able to download if you were to download a hmm, oh here we go. I was looking so when we are live we um we have some hiccups. This is the new issue of the Spiritist magazine. That's the cover of the magazine. And we're going to be talking about this article here. It's green, like green. Not Maymay's, not this one, because we have seen many of these before. And it's called Ethical Autonomy. And Claudio Sonata is a psychologist. If I'm not mistaken, he lives in the state of Bahia in Brazil. And this article is from the Journal of Psychological Studies, which is an excellent journal you can look at. So he's going to be talking about how are some of the ways you and I make decisions? Who is around us who may or may not be influencing the way we interact with the world? So he says here, so the title is here, Ethical Autonomy. I'm going to remove the sidebar so I'll have a little bit more space. And then we have Claudio Sinatis comments. He says, since ancient philosophy, as well as religions, we see attempt to establish principles and values to guide ethical behavior. Ethics, as defined by some philosophers, is a set of these values and principles, and morality is the practical exercise, what we materialize as behavior in everyday life. So the ethics is the principles you and I live by, and morality is the practical manifestation of those behaviors in our daily lives. Bringing with it the ability to discern between good and evil, human beings consider the only ethical animal, in quotes. And where can we find the ethical principles of good and evil? Chapter three. Uh, 11, uh, chapter 11 is one of them. Part 3 of the Spirit's book. Chapter 11 is the law of justice, love, and charity, which is one of the ten divine laws. And the first chapter of the third part of the Spirit's book, the Spirit's bring to us good and evil as well. So let's talk about this. The set of values and principles and the application 
of those principles in our everyday life. Nevertheless, observing the crisis of ethical order, there are spreading all over the planet. That's how we feel, right? Everything that people are doing, the values they hold, they don't hold, the atrocities we see, the good work that we see. We do have a little bit of a crisis of ethical order, even though good is still present in the world. Becoming evident in institutions and collectivities. So everywhere you go, you see the expansion of this crisis of ethics. In poverty and misery, right? If our value is if one of our values includes, for example, the law of equality in this book, we shouldn't have um, to observe poverty and misery or wars that exterminate human beings and the, all the life forms around the wars and intolerance. That, that is the crisis of ethics. And the morality would be what we do about it right, those values, it can be seen that we have a lot to evolve in order to reach a degree of ethical autonomy. We're still going, friends. The third um, chapter of the Gospel according to Spiritism, we have the definition of the five types of worlds that populate the globe. We are in a world that Kardec and the Spirits define as trials and expiations and those worlds evil still dominate that's why we see crisis of ethical order poverty misery wars of extermination intolerance that's when the material dominates that's when the evil which is lack of goodness dominates sometimes evil can be out of ignorance We still have a lot to evolve, but we are in the transition period between trials and expiations and regeneration. So we are already flourishing in our ability to observe the ethical crisis and to make a decision. We have choices. We have agency. We have relative free will, absolute free will, only God. And we can decide not to participate in the crisis of ethics. When values are so deeply rooted individual that coercive measures are necessary for harmonious living in society. That's when we are truly ethically autonomic. We are really able to make decisions so that we don't we would not need the punitive measures that we have from law. In a place where People don't speed, you don't need traffic laws. When we respect the right of others, which is the definition of justice in the law of justice, love and charity, we won't need to tell people don't kill, don't steal, don't hurt others because the values will be rooted in us and the harmonious living is not going to be based on the uh, structures, co coercive measures that we have today. Have you thought about it? Let's give you an example that is not about a world that is perfect, but it's a place that you and I know and I read about. And if you haven't, you go to the book No Solar to get a glimpse of what it is. So the colony No Solar is located in the upper levels of the lower zone. So we call Umbrau in Portuguese. And in that area, the individuals that live there, and if you read the book, you'll see the story of No Solar and when they were in harmonious, what happened when they were trying to live just like they were on the earth and the barriers of protection broke down. But for the most part, the one million inhabitants at that time live harmoniously. They're all there because they are preparing for a new reincarnation and they have merit and they have credit to be there. They all pray at six o'clock. There's no homelessness. There's no medical bills. Nobody goes hungry. People have to work. People are asked to work and to serve in the colony in whatever capacity they are. This is when there is harmonious living. But of course, Claudius Sinotti is here talking about harmonious living in the physical. I'm giving an example of a colony. And many other colonies all throughout the earth 
who have that similar characteristics. And if you go one level above, Andrea Luis talks about where his mom is, which is even, which is even higher in elevation, and he only got a glimpse of it when he went to this um, to visit her. So that's what we should aim for. Everybody has a place. We, our abilities, are, our potentialities are developed. What I do is improve the good and not just for my own selfish reasons, right? Then we won't need coercive measures. Of course, there's consequences to actions. If people misbehave in our solar, they're not going to be allowed in because we don't want people to be emotionally contagious to others and dangerous to others, right? It happens, he continues, I'm going to go back to being large here. It happens that ethical conscience, is not something ready-made. It needs to be exercised and improved through one's own commitment. We are born simple, and lacking knowledge. We go through many reincarnations. That's in the first part of this principle. What's the spirit, the intelligence principle of the universe? And we learn and we come back to the earth and we learn earth and other planets, other places. And then throughout time, we are able to acquire this ethical conscience that we're still lacking for the majority of us on the earth. But the laws of progress we're not here to knock anybody down and discourage. We're here to educate ourselves, to learn and to spread the good news that the life on the earth, as we know, is only one facet, one sliver of humanity throughout the universe. And then as we grow, as we learn, we get better, we get better. And this ethical conscience is not ready made. But we need commitment. We need to commit today to be loyal to be conscientious, to be honest, that's what true love is and the law of love in the gospel according to spiritism. So how committed are we to develop this ethical conscience throughout this life and in many lifetimes to come? Exercised and improved. So it's not just about reading this and oh, I'm, I have a ready-made Ethical. No, we have. We are presented with actions that we have to take, with decisions, with situations that allow us to exercise an ethical conscience and to improve it. This can only be achieved through self knowledge. So, where are we? Where do I want to go? Where are we? Question nine hundred nineteen of the Spirit's book, self knowledge. Write every down, everything every day you write down what you did and didn't do, what worked, what could you do better. Next day you try again. And where do you want to be? But it's like, I don't know where are those spiritual values you're talking about. Then we go to, to question and answer, starting on 100 of the spirits book, they talk the hierarchy of spirits. And then we look at the second order of spirits, the good spirits. And then we pick which characteristic and quality we are going to work on. And now we talk about Joanna. Joanna says, self-knowledge, which, as Joanna Dangerous says, provide the acquisition of values that enable one to have a sense of freedom in choosing the experiences he or she should live. So the question is, do I want, can I, what is, what will be the consequences, personal and collective, of the things I do? The things I think, remember, for what is life? Because we are a little bit more advanced these days. Sometimes we don't do harm to others, but we think. We backstab, we gossip, that's doing evil. Because Jesus wouldn't do that, so we can't do that. Should I, she says, should I? Is this the moment, among others, help to assess the impact of our choices, establishing an important exercise for ethical autonomy? So when we are in, presented by life with different circumstances that happen to be 
the result of our actions in the past multiply by the power of God because God is so gracious. God is granting you and I right now this opportunity to be together, to learn, to grow, and to ask questions and make plans. And the Spirit Paul, we find this quote for us. The Spirit Paul says something. Um, the Apostle Paul, in one of his letters, he talks about this. Not everything that I want is convenient. So it's, it's like this. All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. Or in NIV, you have the right to do anything, but you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. So as we go about our day in life, just because they are doing, should we? They are spending time, money, resources to enjoy, 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 should we? Can we? Yes, of course we can. We have free will. Should we? So we have to teach the children that like we, we return to improve ourselves, to learn the law of God as God intended. Excuse me. To learn the law of love as God intended. Are these actions today helpful? What are the consequences of what I do if we took only a few seconds to think of it? We will make different decisions, Right? That's a lot to think through. Where are we in this level of growth with our ethical conscience? Do I know myself? Do I know my good points, my points that need to be improved? How am I behaving in the world? And what is the impact of what we do? Is the law is of action and reaction, right? So this is issue 88 of the Journal of Psychological Studies. These are some some ideas, a lot of food for thought by Claudio Sinotti on ethical autonomy. So I hope that now that we've spent this time together and you've been able to get a glimpse of this questions you want to ask, we want to ask ourselves every day, where am I, where I'm going, can I do this, should I do this, so that we can improve. In this lifetime, much more as much as it can, so that in when we return to the spiritual realm, what we have to do account of is less, that we have saved time, that we have used our time wisely, we haven't wasted time, that we have helped everyone, that we have served many people, including helping ourselves to go through this service. It needs to be self-improvement, self-care, but also helping others and eventually that will become a time that helping others is the type of self-care and nourishing of our souls that we want dear friends what a blessing to be here with you today and every tuesday i hope that you stay well i hope that you stay safe and i'll see you god willing next week stick around so you can have a moment helping uh, to learn more about uh, the Spirit's book and the Divine Laws, our dear friend Carol Correa at 9 p.m. Have a blessed one, and I'll see you, God willing, next time. Bye-bye.